We are reaching the end of the Hotelplanner.com PGA EuroPro Tour with just two regular season events left. It's all still to play for as players bid for a place at Tour Championship and ultimately one of five Challenge Tour cards. Hello and welcome to the Jesse May Championship. This week, the tour has returned to Collentry Park in Northampton for the first time in four years, and the players are ready to continue their challenge on the race to Amandura. The season has taken the tour all over the UK. Let's have a reminder of what's happened so far. Here is a reminder of the race to Amandura. In the top five positions are Neil Raymond, Jonathan Caldwell, Nick Marsh, Chris Lloyd, and MK Kim, who won the last two EuroPro Tour events. Remember, it's just the top 60 players on the order of merit who will make it to the Tour Championship in Amandura, and only those will have a chance for one of the five Challenge Tour cards. With just one win worth 10,000 pounds, any of the players can still make the cut. I'm joined by golf reporter Kit Alexander. Well, Kit, that's the race to Amadura. We've got two regular season events left. What do you make of it, this order of merit? Well, it's incredibly exciting, isn't it? At the top of the leaderboard there, we've got Chris Lloyd, three wins to his name, MK Kim, two wins as well. It's going to be really exciting to see if they can get the four wins that could earn them a quarter of a million pounds. It's still very much on. And of course, the top 60 qualify for the Tour Championship as well. It really is crunch time now, the last chance to get that place on Tour Championships. So how will nerves play a part now? It will definitely be a bit nervous for the players. The later you get in the season, the more every shot seems to mean, and the margins are often so slim. Anyone that gets in that top 60 and goes to Amandwera for the Tour Championship could earn enough money with a win that week to earn the top five Challenge Tour cards. So that's what's on everyone's minds as we head into the final couple of events. Thanks, Kit. Can't wait to see how this all plays out. Let's now take a look at what this course has to offer. Collintree Park Golf Course in Northampton was opened in 1990 by designer and two-time major winner Johnny Miller. Johnny established himself as one of the golfing greats in his career and used all of his skills and experience to design a testing 6,776-yard par 72 course. It holds water on 10 holes, including the signature 18th. The venue also boasts a great history and has a long association with the European Tour, having hosted the British Masters in 1995 and 1996, 
and join the prestigious list of first stage venues. It's another great venue, isn't it? Absolutely, the whole place is steeped in history. The village of Collingtree itself is mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086, and it's a rich golfing history at the course as well. The European Tour came here, 95 and 96. Sam Torrance and Robert Allenby were the winners then. Let's see who can add their name this week. It's gonna be really exciting. Brilliant, let's see what some of the players have to say about their week so far. Marion plays been very good this week. Uh, I haven't driven the ball great, which you probably need to around here, but. Uh, no, my iron play has been pretty good. I've been hauling out pretty well from five feet. The course is in really good condition this week. The weather's been a lot different from when I won in 2009. Uh, it was sort of quite cold and quite windy that year, so the scoring's uh, a lot better this year. So it's a slightly different test than uh, seven, eight years ago. Every hole seems to have like my perfect yardage, and it has done every year for some strange reason. Uh, I've got family down here as well, so it's quite comforting on a night. Just go have tea with them and um, yes. My ear chewed off a little bit, but no, it's, it's great, I like it around here. But I'm pleased with how I've played so far and uh, like I say, been in, been in some good form, so no, no expectations really, not going to put too much pressure on myself, just try and enjoy it and see what unfolds. I've seen some of the scores this year, I mean the score has been phenomenal on, on the Euro Pro and you do have to question, I mean some of the, you know, some of the cuts, you know, even minus five, I mean it shows how the standards just getting better and better on this tour, you know. I'm one of the reasons I'm not playing, but... <laughs> a bit nervous, obviously, but I think, you know, that's good. Looking forward to it. First time leading, going into the final round, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to enjoy it, I think. So that's how the leaders feel, Kit. How do you feel about the conditions on the course today? Well, if you look, it's absolutely perfect. The sun is shining, which we've not always been fortunate enough to have this year, but we certainly do here at Collingtree. There's a little bit of breeze, but not too much for the players to worry about. And with soft greens that are receptive, but also rolling nicely, we're going to see plenty of birdies. I think the guys are going to have to go really low if they want to make a charge today. Well, how do you think it's going to pan out? We've got James Fraser at the top of the leaderboard. An interesting dynamic to look out for, though. Steve Surrey and Alex Bell have both won Euro Pro Tour events at Collingtree before and they're in the chasing pack. Speaking to James Fraser before the round though, I like where his head's at. He knows he needs to get a win. He's been in and around it for a while, never quite got over the line, but I fancy him today. He strikes it fantastically and he's got a good strategy heading into the final round. Thanks Kit, looking forward to seeing how this plays out. I let you get back to your on-course duties and now it's over to our commentary team. Thanks Imogen. Thanks, Kit. Yes, the sun is shining, Cointry Park looks inviting, and there's a Welshman at the apex of the standings. That's James Fraser, too clear of Lee Clark, but with everyone on the leaderboard within five of the pace, the Jesse May Championship remains very much up for grabs. And the first play we see figured prominently in the first event of the season, Dermot McElroy. Yeah, here he is, second shot to the first. Had a stunning start to the year. Towering iron shot in there, pin high. On the second hold, Sam Connor. Winner earlier on in the season. And that's a great looking shot there, spinning back. Oh. Tap in birdie, that's going to be. Man with the hat. Yes, I thought for a moment it was the Trilby Tour. We were in the wrong place. He's got a fine line in hats, says Sam. Now here's Ennefer. The guys really are peppering the pins today. Green's very receptive. Yeah, the course is playing very, very nicely, Scott, and it's uh, in good shape this week as we look at McElroy, this for his birdie, and just grabs the right edge there, and thanks very much. Lovely start. Second in the Lookers Championship at Close House, tied second at Ballykistine, tied third more recently at East Sussex National. McElroy. Connor cleans that one up, moves to within four. Now, this gentleman is a very experienced player indeed. He certainly is. Steve Surrey, been around a long time, plays out of the Cumberwell Golf Course, where the uh, Euro Pro Tour 
has been earlier this season, and that's another cracking shot, as you say, Scott, they're firing them in close today. Yeah, it's a perfect day for scoring, and with the leaderboard being so tight, I think uh, it's going to take a low round to steal this championship. As we see Enifer convert that one for birdie. Back on the first, Alex Belt, who won the title here at Collingtree Park the last time the Euro Pro Tour was here, four years ago. Yeah, so he'll have some good memories to draw on. That's a lovely controlled shot in there. It was nice, that nice little three-quarter swing, pushing the ball forward, just letting it ease up to the up to the hole. Now, McElroy, under the bank, is he in a bunker here? I think he was just under the bank there. He's whipped it up, launched it high in the air. And right beside the pin, cracking shot. Yeah, of course, it's looking fabulously, fabulously well presented this week. Now then, par five, fourth. Third shot of Ennefer. Little pitch from the side of the green, up the slope. And he's judged that very well indeed. Another birdie opportunity. Alex Belt isn't the only former winner of a Euro Pro Tour event here at Collingtree Park. Steve Surrey won one in 2009. The Michael Ward UK Open. He remembers how to read the greens. Yeah, he certainly does. Phil got that on a good line there. As you say, very experienced player, Steve Surrey. Nice man. Yeah, plays, plies his trade down on the Sunshine Tour in the winters. Doing reasonably well down there. And that's another one drained for McElroy. And when he gets his eye in on the greens, he doesn't miss many at all. So, can Alex Belt improve his score? He certainly can. Very nice little putt there. All steadies it all down. It's looking like you're going to have an exciting day. Yeah, I think so. We're in for a treat. It'll all be uh, coming together on the back nine. Now this for another birdie. After that pitch from the side of the green. Just about five feet here. Oh, that one was never quite on line and took a bounce. Didn't get a chance to go in. Safely in for his par, though. Disappointing. Will Ennefer turned professional last year, only 19 years of age. He plays out of the Rican Golf Club in Shropshire. He's won twice on the Algarve Pro Tour, and he's role models, his dad and Tiger Woods. Good pair, that. Yeah, that's nice to see. Like a lot of the young lads, uh, Tiger Woods, their role model, for sure. As we watch Tim Rice. Funny little hop there as it came up short. Misjudgment. Talking of hopping, John Morgan has hopped up to the first par five here, the fourth. Well, cracking par five in front of the boys this week, the fourth, 531 yards, big soft dog leg from start to finish from right to left. Hazard down the right, hazard down the left, that is from start to finish as well. The hazard on the right though, if you block it slightly and you can carry it over 300 yards, I know it's a tall order, you'd probably just take it a little bit out of play. But this baby is tight as you like. You know, the key shot on this hole is commitment. You know, you've got a lone ranger of a little tree there in the distance, little baby oak, and he's just the other side of the fairway. You know, the fairway just bends just before him, but it's ideal just to focus your brain and your eyes on the right edge of that tree. Now, commitment, John. Come on, boy. He's just right of the tree, but he is, honestly, I think he's all right. He might be just hanging in the right rough or just popped out, but the nice thing is about this hole, he's got the humps right and left, and it can feed it in. That's what makes it look even tighter, but uh, commitment is everything. Let's go up there and have a closer look. But there you go. I've hit it 288 yards, pretty much bang on the button. White marker there, and that gives me, and just having a look at this course plan, that gives me 224 to the pin. You've got these tall trees lurking on the left-hand side, which is unfortunately just blocked me out from my second. But luckily, me being a right to lefter, you know, I can aim 
right to those trees and get the ball slinging from right to left and try and feed it up on that green. Right, here we go. Bit out to the right, the draw, but I started it too far right to begin with. You see that bounding on, getting up to the right edge of the green. It's not a bad leave. I tell you what, I take it all day long on a miss. Good hole, this fourth. Scott, they call him first take Morgan. Yeah, we've seen some tremendous shots from John, and he hit two good ones there. Gave us a good view of this par five. Draw is the shape required. But there is a bit of bailout room up the right, and I think a lot of players will be perhaps just there, short and right, leaving themselves a relatively straightforward pitch up the green today. As we trundle back to the Tim Rice on the first, where his ball came up just in front, playing a nice little chip and run. Come on! Oh, I tell you, that was a great line there. Yeah, that was tracking at the hole. You would have fancied that halfway. Just pop this one in. Save a few seconds. Will Ennefer done really well this year. Tied second at the Q School at Frilford Heath. His best result on the Euro Pro Tour so far. Tied fourth at Luton Who and four other top 25s. Yeah, it's a good start to a career, and that was another lovely shot in there, giving himself a, a chance of another birdie. Now, Sam Connor, very difficult hole this, particularly for amateurs, because so many of them tend to play with a bit of a slice, and on a hole which turns the other way, it's really tough for the poor old handicapped boys. But Sam Connor's dealing with it nicely and leaves himself a chance for a birdie. So Ennefer trailing by four. This will pull another one back if he can make this. Just a little bit from his right. And he's read it beautifully. He's mounting a little charge here. He was a plus four handicap when he turned professional. Yeah, that's a great figure to get to. A lot of guys get to plus two, perhaps three, but we'll just start getting to plus four. You are a serious player as we go to Connor for his birdie up and over the little ridge. And that was the last breath, last roll it dropped in. Another birdie on the card. The likes of Steve Uzel leading in the clubhouse at nine under par, thanks to a final round 66. And 67 shooter David Booth have shown what's possible. A fast start from McElroy has elevated him into a share of second. But Fraser still leads by two. Will he be King James at Collingtree Park in the Jesse May Championship? Welcome back, everyone, to the Jesse May Championship. Over the past 12 months, the Euro Pro Tour has developed an association with the Jesse May Trust, raising money for the charity by asking players to guess how many balls will be lost in the Pro-Am. Here's the charity's chief executive, Chris Royes, to tell us more about the course. Jesse May, who was a little girl, um, aged, uh, well she died when she was aged uh, four and a half months old. She died in her father's arms at home. And it was after that that they um, wanted to set up a charity to enable other families with children in similar circumstances to also be able to die at home if that was what they wanted to do. When I started we had about 43 children we were supporting and today, if I'm not mistaken, we have 173 families that we're working with. And in the last uh, sort of three years we've sort of doubled in size and that's really our ambition is to enable other families caring for children with a life-limiting condition to be able to have support at home wherever they live. It's estimated that there are 49,000 uh, children with life-limiting conditions, um, so there's a lot more families who need our support and if we can raise the funds then we'll be able to expand and provide that service elsewhere. Will Snooker are the sponsors of the event today and uh, have championed uh, Jesse May as their cause 
and have introduced us to, to the golf tournament today. So we're here to, um, I think I'm here to um, present some of the awards later on in the day, but also gives us an opportunity to meet other people and raise awareness about the, uh, the work that our charity does and hopefully gain other support as well. I, I hear that um, already two and a half thousand pounds have been raised uh, today uh, and that's absolutely amazing and it's, it's fantastic and we're very grateful for all the support we've got. It really does make a difference because it enables us to obviously support the nurses, to provide uh, the respite care to the families and the more money we get the more respite care we can provide and the more nurses we can employ so it's really fantastic and thank you so much. No Chris, thank you. We're into the final round of the Jesse May Championship here at Collingtree Park. It's being led by James Fraser, who defied any first tee nerves by safely finding the opening fairway. A big day ahead. Big day indeed for a lot of these guys. Now here we go, second shot to the first. Be nice to open with a tight shot in here by the flag. A little bit like that. Bit of unwanted backspin there, Gary, but Straight down the banner. Yeah, it was a great line. Oppen's just hit it too well to put that much spin on it. But, uh, now we have a look. Tim Rice. Looks as though those trees are completely blocking him. He's going to haul one up over the top. Yeah, he was far enough back. And he's launched it up high. And very handsomely. Yeah, a lot of mature trees on this course. Catching a few guys out. I was talking about a big day for the leader, James Fraser. So applies to McElroy. He's eighth in the race to Amandwera. And the top five are promoted to the challenge to the next season. So every point he can get, vital. Now Burleson, second to the second. Just a lofted wedge. Looking for it to come back down that slope, perhaps, but coming out of the semi rough, so not able to get the backspin. James Fraser's birdie putt on the first. Front of the green, hold your line, held its line, but no pace, as you can see. He's been excellent on the front nine so far this week, out in 31 and 32, respectively, without a bogey in sight. Yeah, that's a nice thing to have in the bank. Feel comfortable on that nine. Now Burleson down the slope. Not too much movement in this one, which he has seen and read it beautifully. 33. McElroy. Shot in was a little bold, got a big bounce. This 20 footer for Birdie. Again, fairly straight. Thought he'd got it, I think. Just shaved on the right side. But he's had a good start. Little tap in for his par five, yep. Feel a little disappointed though, not to pick up one there. Tim Rice. Can he go one better than the first? Firm inside the hole. Yeah, thank you very much. Tim Rice from the Limerick Golf Club, where Tiger Woods has played in the past in the JP McManus Invitational. He won the Irish PGA Championship this year, beating Colm Moriarty into second place. The Volvo China Open champion of yesteryear, Damien McGrain, was in third. Yeah, some good company there. Now this one, well, fortunate to get a backswing, be able to punch this one out. Just trying to avoid those bunkers, which it hasn't. But should be a straightforward up and down there if you can get a lie on it. Now, Robert Burleson is from one of the most beautiful courses in the Midlands, Envil Golf Club, tree-lined splendour. You're not wrong there, Phil. Envil is a wonderful place if anybody gets the opportunity to go and have a game at Envil. Yeah, I used to do a bit of winter practice down there. Courses were always very dry. That shot there just went through a bit long and left, but no danger as we go to Belt. With his pitch into the par five fourth. And 
players just struggling to stop it close to that pin. It's interesting, Scott. One or two of the shots, when they're played from a little bit further away, I know they can create more backspin, but they're almost backing up. When you're pitching in from there, they tend to be releasing today. Yeah, we've seen a few, haven't we, just land near the pin, but just go 20 feet past. And that one was close to going in on the fly. John Morgan has flown up to the fifth. We're here at the fifth. What a par three, 179 yards. And I tell you what, it is fought with danger. The green is so peculiar. It's got this kind of front left to back right, kind of nice and flat. And at the front part of the green, it feeds off into a bit of a swell. Over the back, also, if you're a little bit heavy-handed with your shot, it might hit on the downslope and spurt towards where the the hazard is. Big tree lurking at the back of the green. That's a pretty good aim for me today, where that pin is. And you know, the way the green is actually shaped from front left to back right, it's always nice to be able to work the ball in from left to right. Now, I'm just looking at the right edge of that bunker. That pin looks to be on the right side of the green. So I'm going to be aiming this straight over that and hopefully drift it from left to right. Ideally, I've hit it straight over the right edge of the bunker. Come on, work in. Ooh, on the green. Happy days. Looks like I've got a nice little uphill for two. Get in there. It's the most dangerous hole on the front nine, this. 24 double bogeys or worse so far in the tournament. Yeah, that's astonishing, actually, for a par three that's only 175 yards or so. That one from McElroy, a little short and right, but on the green. Now Burleson, this one from the fringe, just chipping to try and save his par. Another great line, but it's a shot gone. Yeah, only just off the edge of the green there, Gary, using the, using the wedge rather than the putter. Yeah, it was an interesting choice, I think. Nine out of ten players would have probably used the flat stick from there. Now Belt, just over 20 feet for his birdie. Get there, get there. It does. Another one drops. The third hole has produced fewest birdies on the entire golf course. If you make a par here, which Rice is trying to do, Always a good thing, but that was always right. Yeah, just a misread there. Good positive stroke. Just misread it, happens sometimes. Now, McElroy, two behind at the moment. Long range birdie attempt here on the par three. Up the slope, got to give it a good whack, which he has. Took a lot of the borrow out of it. And like I said, when he gets his eye in, he is dangerous on the greens. McElroy and Ennefer have to be delighted with the starts they've made, but Fraser maintains his lead. On the fourth, Burleson hoping to continue a progression that started with a bogey on the first, birdie on the second, bogey on the third, looking to pick up another shot here at the fourth. And back on the third, here's Kit. Third hole third approach with a wedge for Fraser. This time 119 yards. It's just coming out of the first cut of rough. It might get a little bit of a flyer, there's a little bit of grass behind it, but it's back into a light breeze, so that could even it out. He's hitting his wedges really nicely. The putts haven't quite dropped on the first couple of holes, but if he keeps striking it well and remains patient, he's very much in control of this tournament. Yeah, if you're driving the ball well, around here you are leaving yourself a fair few Straightforward wedge shots in, as Kit described. Now this one, let's see if he gets the flyer or not. Hopefully not. Now, beautiful. Pin high. Eight or nine feet for yet another birdie. And his front nine domination continues. Rice. From the same bunker that we show Burleson from. Similar result, just releasing past. No belt, currently 10 under. Second shot here, controlled short iron. 
Grimacing a little bit. No, no need. Another putt there inside 15 feet for Birdie. Swings through the ball very well, doesn't he, Alex Belt? I like it. So, Tim Rice. Can he make this up and down for a birdie? Oh, right round and in the back door. Very good. Talking of birdies, James Fraser has made 16 in the event so far. Nine on day one, seven on day two. Looking to open his account here for round three. Looked like a good solid stroke there. Just moved on him. Perhaps a slight misread yet. Having another look. Always easy to see the borrow after you've hit it. So, Burleson, can he emulate what Tim Rice did? He certainly can. Nice start. Yeah, a couple of good up and downs there from the bunker. Now, Belt, two behind. This will bring him one closer. Just about 12 or 13 feet. Yeah, another positive roll. Straight in the middle. Started out his sports career as a very good footballer. Played for Hull City and York City as a, a junior. But then decided to take up golf to pretty good success. And here he is, talking with Kit. Alex, it's only your third event on the Euro Pro Tour this season because you've been playing a lot of golf in China over the summer. Can you yeah. tell us how that came about? Um, well, a few lads went over there and they did well out there and uh, the prize funds were quite good. And it looked quite a, a viable tour to be on. Uh, so I went to the qualifying stage in, I think it was May time, and finished 10, so I got my full card. It was a top 15 that got full category cards. Um, so that's, yeah, the rest is history. Really. I've just been back and forth from China the last, uh, last few months. And you come in this week in really good form, you're playing really nicely. What's been the key for you? Well, I like it round here. Um, obviously, I've won round here, but everything about the place, I don't know whether it's the orientation of the holes or every sort of, every hole seems to have like my perfect yardage. As you say, you won the last Euro Pro Tour event in 2013, so four years ago, but you're a yeah. defending champion in I a suppose, way. Yeah, in a way, yeah. I still see, I still see the, the final shot that I hit, which was probably one of the best shots I've ever hit in my life, just up there uh -huh. as we speak, onto the, um, to the same pin, actually, which is on the... Uh, the back left today on the 18th, so hopefully I can try and recreate something like. But no, I would be delighted to get another win on this tour, which I've, uh, I've been searching for for a few years. Well, good luck to him travelling back and forward to China. Good experience of being a tour player. And then Rice, towering iron, sh iron shot for him into this par three. A little bit safe there. This pin is a long way back today. Tough to get it all the way back there. What a season Lee Clark's having on the Midland Tour. Seven Pro-Am wins, Gary. Takes some doing. It certainly does. The uh, competition in the Midlands is hot and uh, Clark's played very well this season. Go to McElroy. Third to the par four seventh. Too far off the leaders now. He will be searching out birdies on this front nine. That one's a little bit heavy handed. And that is going to be, well, a long putt, maybe a chip and run back to that front pin. Now, Rice, this long putt up across the green. Realistically, he'll be happy to get down in two, I think. And that's going to be a challenge on the wrong line on that, although a good strength, but it's going to be a difficult one to save par. Yeah, those putts, once they get to sort of 60, 70 feet, Gary, quite tricky because you're putting so much pace into it. And here's McElroy down the slope, this one, looking for it to turn right to left. Judge that very well indeed. That should be a safe little par. What can... Tim Rice do with this and can he salvage his part just on the right edge of the hole oh god I honestly thought that was coming it looked as though it was and it didn't like the look of the drop no and that's a shot slipped away on this par three which has yielded many bogeys now Clark this actually for par 
up and over the ridge. Has he got it? That was looking good. No trouble with the short ones. But that will be disappointment for him. As we go back to McElroy. Yes, in his first bogey of the day, relegates McElroy into a share of third place with Will Ennefer. Nothing spectacular, but it's been the definition of solid for Fraser. One clear in the Jesse May Championship. But the likes of Belt, Ennefer and McElroy are breathing down the Welshman's neck. They're looking sharp and they're up for the challenge at Collingtree Park. Hello and welcome back to the Jesse May Championship. The leaders behind me are just about to tee off on the fifth. Let's get straight back to the action. Thanks Imogen. Scoring's good so far. The only player on the leaderboard over par is Lee Clark. James Fraser holds a slender one-shot advantage, but Alex Belt, three under through six so far, is targeting another birdie on the seventh to draw level at the top. Yeah, he's had a cracking start. Feeding off good memories from his last win here. As we see this approach shot. Another one judged beautifully. And another pretty good birdie chance there. Now Fraser is our leader. And he's got this for a birdie too. Extend that lead. Bit of left to right on the end. Didn't quite get there, but not really a birdie chance from that distance. Should be a safe 18 inch putt or so for his part to retain that lead. But retain the lead for what might be a, a short time. Oh, robbed. Yeah, that was looking good all the way, wasn't it? I think he fancied it. Just some subtle borrows around some of these pin positions today. And players looking like putts are dropping in when they're about a foot or two away and just missing. But here's Ennefer, second shot to the 11th now, into the back nine. Good composed action. A lot of action on that ball, perhaps half a club short there. Burleson, second shot on the seventh. Very sort of languid rhythm Burleson has. Good shot, pin high. Yeah, not too far away. As we go to McElroy, long range eagle attempt here to tie the lead. Pretty slow up this slope though. We'll come back to see if he makes his birdie here, which he should do. But first, let's go over to Kit on the sixth. Well, the iron off the tee took the bunkers that you can see behind me out of play for Fraser. But of course, that does then leave a longer second shot. It's 147 yards here. He's been knocking his wedges close. Let's see if he can do it with a little bit of a longer iron in his hand. Yeah, good course management. Take the bunkers out of play. Keep the stress levels down, hit it into good areas. Still only 147. Smooth nine, perhaps. Oh, he just looks like he's let go of that one a little bit. Get there. Mm, just down in that little hollow. Awkward little chip, perhaps. Sounded a poor strike, didn't it, Scott? It was sounded thin. Didn't get a good contact on it. Burleson. Birdie putt on the seventh from this little lip on the green and very nice yeah puts a drop in on this front nine especially i think we are in for some low scores today we go back to fraser our leader just coming out of the fluffy stuff needs to keep it nice and smooth 
Oh, he judged it well, but just dragged it slightly. Bit of work there to do for the part. I was mentioning about McElroy being so high in the race to Amandwera, order of merit. I'm afraid, though, a couple of players who have been doing really well this season have missed the cut. Sam Robertshaw, sixth. He's not playing this round. Neither is Nick Marsh, who's third on the money list. Fraser, after that chip. Um, you know, a little catalogue of errors on this hole. Short, wide, and then wide again with the putt, all culminating in one gone, which is uh, given a look of disbelief. Yeah, unforced error from the middle of the fairway. Just got to put it behind you and move on. Now here's Ennefer. Long range attempt again. That's a great putt. Wow, that is a real bonus. And with that, Scott and Gary. Fraser, the overnight leader, leads no more. He's been relegated to a three way share of second place. Replaced at the top by Will Ennefer, with six golfers, including Robert Burleson, within two of the pace. Yeah, it's really hotting up now. As we go to Burleson, tee shot on the par three eighth. As Gary said, long, smooth rhythm. Doesn't look like a lot can go wrong with that swing. Just a fraction out there, just nestles in the edge of the semi. And back to another look at Steve Surrey, who we haven't seen for a few minutes. Little chip and run, avoided the water. Yeah, nicely judged. Working on the fact the ball's round and it will roll up to the hole. Yeah, he's got all the shots, Steve. McElroy now, second to ten. From the middle of the fairway again. Come on, use the slope, but not too much. Wow. That could go all the way off. Burleson's had a couple of very impressive wins on the 1836 tour. Shot a 62 at Warrington to win in April. A 66, of course, record at Headingley last year. That one, though, a chance spurned. You'd be disappointed with that from the fringe there. That was really not very good. Steve Surrey, after his little chip and run from the edge of the hazard, cleans that one up. Very nice. Now McElroy saw his approach shot spin right back down to the front here. So you can imagine this putt fiercely uphill. Well, he really has rolled those putts beautifully today. He's been very positive with those uphill putts. With McElroy tied for the lead, let's go over to Kit. At 512 yards, the par 5 ninth is very reachable into. It's flanked down the right by a small stream and there's out of bounds left, but there's enough room to open your shoulders and get a drive away. It's playing slightly downwind today, so if you do get one out there, you're inside 200 yards of the pin and it's a green light flag. It's at the back, in the middle, plenty of space to land your shot, run it up and give yourself an eagle chance. Yeah, well, there's been over 20 eagles on this hole this week. Really has yielded some low scoring. Let's see what Rice has got here with his approach. He's eyeing it down. And there's another eagle chance. Tremendous shot in there. Now the well-travelled Steve Surrey. Top tens last year in Zambia and Zimbabwe on the Sunshine Tour. And he was tied second in the line of Africa Cape Town Open. Yeah, he loves it down there, Steve. And that's a great shot in there. Steady now. Yeah, beautifully below the hole. Great birdie chance. As we have a look at the behatted Sam Connor. Claw grip. And just too firm. There. He can't believe it, thought he'd get up there. Oh, I thought it was coming in, wiggled back straight. Oh, I can't believe it. Can't believe it. Tim Rice had a put like that a little earlier on where it looked for all the world as though it was taking the break and right at the end straightened. Yeah, like we said, some very, very subtle borrows. No belt, 
coming out of the semi rough just nestled down a little bit here on 10 release yeah that's worked well for him another uphill birdie chance very makeable Tim Rice after that wonderful second shot this for his eagle don't think he needs to go outside the hole with this yeah very straight very well read very nice eagle three he loves the ninth hole he's gone birdie birdie eagle this week there four under yeah sometimes you get those holes that just suit you suit your eye now McElroy can he keep his charge going well, it's safely on but that's going to be a tricky one up and over that slope Frustrated, a little talk with himself there. Alex Belt. This one coming just slightly up the hill. A bit more movement than he thought on that one. It really dived to the right, Scott. Yeah, just ran out of pace and really took that slope away. So here we are, the 13th, 463. Most difficult hole for amateur golfers, stroke one. Uh, need a good straight hit, a little bit banked on either side. Got to avoid the bunker that we've just gone past. And then it's a long shot into this raised heart-shaped green. Don't think the bunker on the front right will affect these players much, but it's all about getting the right club for the second shot after hopefully having hit the fairway. Yeah, well, let's see what Ennefer can do. He's just missed the fairway, but he's in the shortish rough. Gary said will be a fairly long iron well, perhaps a little bit of a flyer there let's take a look at this action nice balance swing good solid action that it certainly was now the much travelled Steve Surrey and that ball traveling very nicely to the bottom of the cup yeah, I think he got a good read off Belt's putt there, which moved significantly left to right at the end. Joint leader now, McElroy. Long range birdie attempt. He has been good at these uphill ones, but this is a particularly long one. Steady now. A little bit of work to do, perhaps five or six feet there. Looks a bit longer, or will be a bit longer than it looks. Melanifer. Just overshot the green. Awkward shot that when you've got a lot of sort of fringed and rough to try and cover and not very much green. It is extremely difficult to judge it to get it right by the hole. And if this doesn't go in, Enifer will lead on his own again. No, that one bobbled. He felt it jump straight left. Certainly looked like it had a bit of that movement in it. That'll be frustrating. He was in a good spot from the tee. And that's an unforced error. Now Ennefer, leading by one, needs this for his part. Yeah, confidently done. And he's looking in good shape today. Looking very confident. As the final group approach the turn, the Jesse May Championship remains absolutely wide open, with Well Ennefer leading the way by a stroke from four players. It's all about who gets into the highest gear down the back straight. Down the road from Coventry Park Golf Course is Silverstone Racetrack. This is where the Grand Prix happen. We've got MotoGP, Formula One, and our two golfers, Damon Booth and James Moore, to see what we make of it. So guys, you're playing together on the same tour here, and you're also rooming together or lodging up together. How has it been working out over the season so far, James? Um, well, he's the cleanest man I've ever met in my life. Um, <laughs> you don't have to be polite just because we're on camera <laughs> no, no, today. No, 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 he is. Uh, he cleans after you, he does everything for us. <laughs> we fairy. actually call him Dad and the Fairy. The Fairy, yeah, the fairy the comes fairy. and cleans up. This would be cool, wouldn't it, on the uh, Grand Prix day?
just one guy's collection? Yep. What? Yep. It's mad. I wonder if he's missing anything. He's got the worst mood swings I think I've ever met in my life. The thing is, I think we're a little bit different because I have a bad round and I sometimes like affect me. Whereas James is just as cool as a cucumber. Mm. You don't know if he shot five under or five over. But he's, <laughs> he's a good lad to be around. That. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. What is it, the gears? Say that again. The gears. It's just a gearbox, it doesn't oh, look like it. Alright. Fancy scuffing and I OCD, like. cleaning again. <laughs> smells fast. It smells fast. It's like uh, you know NASA when they're in the, the station. NASA, you just been described as it's like NASA. NASA, isn't it? About 12 marshals and five tenders around the circuit. There's a rescue unit, two ambulances. So we're, we're just in case, yeah. right? All kind of stuff. <laughs> you can't, you can't, uh, can't wag it on this job, can you? That big brother. This is big brother, isn't it? Who's practices the most out of you two? Uh, us two, probably me. But yeah, would you agree natural with? talent, me. <laughs> <laughs> Feel playing. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. See you, Phil. Thanks for everything, Mr. Phil. <laughs> the lads had a rare old time, but who will win the race to the Jesse May Championship? We get back to business after the break. Welcome back to the HotelPlanner.com PGA EuroPro Tour here at Collin Tree Park. I'm joined by Kit. Kit, things are looking tight. It's an absolute logjam there at the top of the leaderboard. We've got 14 guys within four shots of the lead as we head into the back nine. And it's a nine where anything can happen. There's birdies, bogeys, eagles out there. Of course, the 18th, the risk and reward, par five with water in front. We are set up for an incredible finish. Brilliant, let's get back to the action. This is the 14th of 16 events that make up the 2017 Euro Pro Tour schedule. And right now it's Will Enifer with a narrow one-stroke lead over four players. Among them, Steve Surrey. Surrey's on the 11th hole, just about to play his second shot, right hand semi-rough. Looks worse than it is behind that tree. Just clears the water as we go over to Kit on the ninth. Fraser has really opened up this dog leg par five with a tee shot down the left. He's come into the rough and it's sitting down a little, but he's only got 200 yards to the flag. So he could get there with as little as a mid iron. He needs something to really get the momentum back into his round. And this is the perfect opportunity. Well, he bogeyed six, the rest pars, but Fraser has made two birdies on this hole on the previous two days. Yeah, well, he was sitting down a little bit, but that hasn't affected him. That's a cracking shot. A little bit unlucky not to release a bit more there. So we go to Rice on 10, middle of the fairway. Just a field shot here with a wedge. Got to get these ones tight today. Leaderboard is bunched using the back slope. Steady. We've seen a few there. A little bit too much spin. Fraser following that excellent shot from the semi that Kit told us about. Can he convert for an eagle? No, just a pull. He never got it running on quite the right line, but uh, yeah, he'll tap this in in a second for his birdie and becomes a joint leader. Now back to Surrey. Second shot we saw, saw just cleared the water. Just below the level of the green in the sand here. He's flighted it very high. Not a bad effort. Straight over the flag. Will Enifer's only real blip in the first couple of rounds was making back-to-back -back bogeys here at 15 and 16. Oh, let's have a look, see what he can do today. Can we have an improvement on that? 
Well, he just avoids the bush. I think he's got a backswing. I think he can get in there and play some kind of chip, but that was a little bit fortunate. Yeah. Look nasty. So, Tim Rice, having had far too much backspin. Oof. And it tried to turn in from the edge of the hole. Well, it's a guaranteed par, but I'm afraid you can't say the same thing on 15 for Will Ennifer. Here's Kit. Ennif has left himself a really tricky chip shot here. He's quite tight into this bush. He's going to have to back into it a little bit to give himself a decent stance, and he's not really got any green to work with. It's not conducive to a flop shot, but that might be what he needs to get it close. How would you guys play it in the commentary booth? Well, I think it has to be a little flop shot down onto the fringe. Like it says, he's got to be very careful backing into the bush. Can't break pieces off. That would be a penalty, and he's played that lovely. Yeah, just as I saw it. What do you think, Gary? Yeah, he just had enough room to play one of those sort of little soft, slidey ones where you can use the bounce of the club just to pop under the ball. And very, very good shot. Now, Surrey, from the front trap to here. This to save his part. See the line on the ball, looking right to left. And just coming up shy, a little bit more pace. That would have held its line. That will be a disappointing bogey for Steve. In a good position in this tournament. He'll be very eager to close it out on the back nine. Our joint leader, Ennefer. Yeah, 18 inches there, safely in. The 15th isn't the only tough par three on the back nine, as John explains. This par three, 192 yards, it's an absolute blinder, it really is. I mean, you've got this beautiful lake here, all the ducks are having a field day, steam coming off it, no more better than this, is it? But do you know where the danger is? It's got the hazard kind of feeds down the left-hand side as well of this green, and there's two bunkers, one short right and one back right. Ideally, aim at the middle of the green with the pin back right today, hit a nice big high fade left to right to, into that back portion of the green, if you want to make it two, but that's a tall order, because this is some, well, devilish par three. Now, Commit to your shot here, boys and girls, because if you don't, you could be racking up a big one. Right, hang on there, ball. Hang on there. Well, that's a pure example. I pulled it probably no more than that off the left edge of the green, and it's just done a left-hand turn Clyde straight into the hazard. And now I'm going to rack up a big one. Now there's a rarity, inaccuracy from the great man. Will Alex Belt do a better job? Yeah, John showing that he is human. He does hit the odd stray shot. I and Belt. Was, I think he was thrown by the steam duck. Yeah, you could be right there, Gary. Couldn't see the green. Well, that one is safely on. Pin high right. Wasn't messing with the hazard there, Belt. Pretty sensible. Now McElroy. Birdie attempt at 13, huge swing off the left. Come on. Just lacking a bit of pace there. A little bit of work to do, actually, for his part. Raise up. Behind the fir trees. Again, hauling one up into the air. Never easy to keep it straight from there. You have to sort of lean back a little bit with your weight, and it's very easy for the hands to cross over and close the club face, as we could see there, make the ball go a bit left. No belt, just one off the pace. Long birdie attempt down the slope. And he's got it. What a time to make one. Tied for the lead now, belt. Elroy, this 30 inch of to save his par. Yeah, safely in. And he will be looking for a win. No question. He's come knocking on the door as we go to Fraser. Just came up left, popping up out of the fluffy stuff, but it's uphill there. And that's got killed on the first bounce. Wrong club there. 
you know, he's playing to a higher level uphill, needed a straighter face club to get that ball running at the hole. Their belt after that tremendous birdie from the fairway. A little bit of an unforced error there. Not long, but a bit left. Can Fraser make amends? Just on the very edge of the hole here, I think this putt needs to be. Yeah, just too straight and the break, as you can see, taking it past the edge of the hole. Well, I can tell you that Fraser tidied up for his bogey there, but moving in the right direction, after a birdie on the 13th to get back double digits under the card, it's Sam Connor. Yeah, and here's another chance coming. Come on, keep feeding down the slope. That's a great tee shot there, right on line. Another birdie chance for him. So we return to Alex Belt. Good lie in the first cut. Just awkward to judge the strength of this. Again, it was another one of those with a lot of fringe and not much green to stop the ball in. McElroy tested to the max. He's sand skills with this one not a bad lie oh and that's almost perfectly judged yeah good technique there face was wide open not easy from that sand a joint leader belt this to save par though a little bit of left to right movement on this one always missing he was up and out of that he drops out of a share for the lead it's a day Gary of fluctuating fortunes for many yeah, it's been very exciting I've really enjoyed watching it but uh, it's been very up and down and still much drama to come I'm sure so we see Connor roll in another birdie he is finding his form on this back nine Kelroy taps in for his birdie, takes him into a share for the lead. All happening, isn't it? The Jesse May Championship continues to tighten. Appropriate, really, when you consider one of those in contention is a gentleman called Belt. Enifer and McElroy are the joint leaders, but Connor, Belt and Fraser are only one behind. We've got several candidates for success here at Calling Tree Park. Following a four-year gap, the Euro Pro Tour is back at Calling Tree Park on the outskirts of Northampton for the Jesse May Championship. We're actually at a, a young club. Um, we, you know, we've only been going for about 27 years, which is nothing uh, to uh, these much older clubs. Uh, but it's what we've had here, which is we've had the British Masters here. You know, we've had the, the, the people that have been at the very, very top of their game. And then there's just other things that make us a bit different. We have 10 holes with water, for instance, on top of all these bunkers. So it's, it's, it's things like that and, and having you know, a high level of competition here. In terms of what's on offer, it's a mental attitude off the tee. Um, it's not particularly tight, but they're fairly generous fairways and wide, but I think just the fact that you see the water um, through the side, you know, on the periphery of your view, um, can just make you um, maybe tense up or maybe do something that you maybe not, not uh, want to do. And I think many a times, I think all the members at Collintree would agree that you have a good round going, and then you come to the 18th tee, and where there's water all the way down the left and then you've got an island green and it doesn't matter how well you've played um, your whole card could be ruined just on that one hole without you doing anything different really well we're now into the back nine and still it's anyone's guess as to who is going to collect the ten thousand pounds first prize here just two shots cover the leading seven golfers with will ennifer and dermot mckelroy the joint leaders at the moment yeah, and here's Fraser. 
He was the leader at the start of the day. Par 3, 12th. The hole over the water. Can he find something to turn his day around? Currently one over for his round. And safely on. Now let's take a look at this 14th hole. Par 5, 543 yards. You can see bunkers down the right. Got to keep it down the left side of the fairway. Needs a good old drive today to get this ball up onto this green in two. If not, there is a bailout short and left. And you can see the green surrounded by bunkers if you do go for it. So two accurate shots required to find this putting surface in two. And can Steve Surrey ride toward us and find the green in two? Good contact. Stay there. Yeah, just hangs on to the very edge of the green. Long putt for an eagle, but uh, safely aboard. And Alex Belt on this friendly par five doesn't need to give it a belt to get there into. Yeah, long old drive. And able to attack the pin a bit more. A lot of undulation around this green and on this green. But that. It's a very good eagle chance for Belt. Tim Rice. Obviously a pretty deep old lie there down in the sand. The way he dug into that one. Yeah, looking for the chunk and run. Now Fraser. We saw Belt hole from this side down the slope. Has he read it right as well? He has indeed. Gets him back to level par for the day. And that could be the catalyst for him on the closing holes. But if Belt holds this, he's the outright leader. Yeah, what a time to make an eagle. He's hit two good shots. Has he hit a good putt? Yes, he has. Fist pump there. You can see what that means to him. And don't discount Will Ennefer on the 17th. Ennefer hasn't got a great lie over here in the rough, but he has opened up a nice angle into the pin. There's a bit of a tuft of grass behind it, so he'll struggle to generate as much spin as he would from the fairway. Fortunately, that pin is right at the back, though. He can land it middle of the green and release it up there nice and safely. We shouldn't be surprised he's going low, you know. Last year, he topped the stroke play section at the English Amateur Championship with a second round 64 at Ganton. And certainly a fine score around Ganton. And that's a pretty good shot. Did what Kit said it would. Middle of the green. Ball just a little bit back in his stance to create a slightly steeper angle of attack. Punching the ball forward. Holding the club face square. Oh, sorry. His uh, third shot up to here, this for his birdie on the par five, and he makes it. Well on, Steve. Keep pressing on, not too far away. Par three, 15th. What can McElroy do with his tee shot? Beautifully followed there in the sky. Come on, come on. Well, from one Irishman to another, Tim Rice, you would feel, has to sink this one to have any lingering hopes of the title. Yeah, this is a clutch putt. Go on. Oh, right in the jaws. One roll short. That will be a bogey. Not the time to make them. Closing stretch. Connor on 16. Yes, having found trouble off the tee. So a par, highly unlikely. Yeah, and that's a shame. Made a couple of great birdies. About to give something back. Now from Ireland, this is Niall Keeney.
fighting back in his round after a poor start. And talk about that tram liner. Fantastic stuff. Kearney is attached to Royal Dublin. Professional now for eight years. He's had six hole-in-ones and he's been the Irish PGA champion not once but twice. Now let's go back to Kit on 17. Enifer has 15 feet to get to 13 under par here. It's a little uphill and it looks pretty straight. He's been putting well. I fancy he might hold this one. Well, if he can hold it and birdie the last, he will set a mean clubhouse target. But here's the first step. He needs to roll this one in. He's been looking really good all day. Go on. Oh, slight misread there. Pat had enough pace. Didn't see the borrow. So he will stay at 12 under. He knew that was a good chance that's gone missing. Over to Sam Connor, 16th. Running one at the hole. Come on, looking good. Uh, lovely pace, not quite the line. He has a bogey and the tee shot to blame. Now McElroy. Very good tee shot in here on the par three. Just about 18 feet. Just going to move from his left side. Has he read it? He has indeed. And that puts him back in the tie for the lead. What a titanic battle this closing round of the Jesse May Championship is turning out to be. Connor's bogey on the 16th, most likely a scup at his chances, because he's now trailing by three from the Kelroy and Belt, who's arrived on the 15th tee. So what good memories can Alex Belt dredge up over these last few holes of his last visit to Collingtree? A rising shot and really nicely judged that's only about eight feet away well let's take a look at this 16th hole 392 yards par four you can see a couple of bunkers down the right again favor the left side of the fairway if you can straightforward approach shot in, in here as well bunker short and left not really going to trouble the guys today some mounding on the right a really good birdie opportunity, you would say, in these closing holes. And here is our joint leader, McElroy. Ball slightly above his feet. Just got to be a bit careful that it doesn't shoot off slightly left from there. Pretty well judged. Never easy when the ball's above your feet because the club face is already looking a bit left of the target. But he's controlled that pretty well. Fraser had a position off the tee here on 14. Par five, second shot. Looks to have turned that one over. Plants into the safe area. Good chance of an up and down from there, you would say. Elroy is for his par off after it very quickly knows it's not going in that's a shot gone now Fraser back at 14 sitting down in this rough a little bit and I look for it to release up the slope Quite enough. Seen a couple of guys coming up short from there. Now then, Belt to lead by two. And, oh no, no, never easy, Scott, is it? From there, the, just only half an inch off. But if you're putting from one level of grass to another, the ball can hop, and you just don't have that control over it. Yeah, I mean, he was really unlucky with that tee shot, actually. He could have just grabbed the edge of the green. 
and fed down to the hole. Now here's Fraser. Uh, it was a good positive putt. He saw it moving left to right. It just didn't quite happen for him. This is so tight, it could all be decided by the signature hole here at Collingtree Park, the daunting 18th. Well, what an 18th hole. Probably, i got to say, the best 18th hole we play all season on the Europro Tour. It's so demanding. It's a par five, it's 543 yards long, and it's fraught with danger from start to finish. But look at the tee shot. This is what I want you to see, right? It's a tight tee shot to boot already. You know, the, the fairway, the, it Miranda's from right to left, down to a hazard that's lurking on the left. And that goes from pretty much where we are right now, all the way up to the green and around it as well to boot. On the right-hand side, you've got out of bounds, and it is tight as you like. Now, ideally, you want to hit a nice right-to-left shape. When you're under the pressure, tee it high and let it fly. Don't hold back, because you never know. You never know. Dreams come can, tr can come true. And I tell you what, I have absolutely smoked it. Get up there, ball. Go on, fly like an eagle. And I tell you what, let's go out there and have a closer look. Arr. So I've got 213 yards to go to the front of the green. So if I wanted to be really precise, it's a tall order. So what am I going to do? I'm going to play for the back portion here. I'm going to take all this water out of play here and play for this. And if it slightly goes long, hopefully it just holds up before the water. <sighs> Come on in, Johnny boy. Good strike needed, that's all it is. Tall, strong, commit. Fly ball, fly like an eagle. Be the club, get up, up. Oh, he's above ground. He's watertight, he's not swimming, but he's a long way from home. But chances and pressure is on your opponent. That's the way to do it. John Morgan back to normal, but Will Enifer has played this hole a little more conservatively. Yeah, there's options. You can go for it like John did if you need to. Or you could play a couple of irons up, leave yourself a good yardage with a wedge. But this one is from the sand. Yeah, long bunker shots are not easy to judge. And that one is going to be tricky. Yeah, suddenly all the plans of trying to play safe come to naught and you feel slightly foolish. Yeah, if you're going to play safe, you have to take the bunkers out of play as we go to belt. Second shot. Oh, that's a cracker. That's a cracker, six or eight feet there for another birdie. Tim Rice's tee shot on the 15th. Played steadily today, Rice, without really threatening. That's another very solid shot. You have to believe. Minimum requirement for Will Enifer up and down here. Yeah, dropping a shot on a par 5 18th would be pretty devastating for him. Right oh, he's played that beautifully. Soft hands, great contact, great technique. And he should save his part. As we see where the belt can make a birdie. Just three feet. And absolutely no trouble at all. Not played a great deal on the Euro Pro Tour this year. Tied 44th in the Lucas Championship. Miscut at the Nokia Masters down at Manning's Heath, but very much in line for a victory here. He is. He's played wonderfully as we watch Enifer roll that one in and you can see there just the one bogey around a 67 five under but finishing with seven pars just not quite giving himself the chances he needed on the closing stretch but a very good tournament so we see McElroy firing one into the pin and almost running in the hole right behind the cup oh, cool that would have looked good in the air Now a bogey on 16 for Sam Connor. This to avoid another one on the 18th. Oh. Sad finish, really. 
Next for him, though, it's a place in the Bridgestone Challenge down at Luton Hoo on the Challenge Tour next week. And he's in that tournament after winning at Luton Hoo on the Euro Pro Tour. So he'll be looking forward to his second visit to that bunkerless course. Yeah, like you say, Phil, very disappointing final three holes there. Very, very costly. Now McElroy cracking shot in. Shaved the hole, as Gary said. Can he convert? A oh. little bit of movement on it. Just up and out of it, perhaps. Maybe a bit of pressure. Maybe a bit of nerves. You can't escape the feeling that could be, in the final analysis, crucial. For the first time today, there's a degree of daylight at the top. Belt, six under for the day, 14 under for the tournament, leads by two from Annifer, McElroy and Fraser. The nitty gritty of this Jesse May Championship here at Collingtree Park is coming up after the break. Back in the mid-90s here at Collingtree Park, the British Masters was contested. The winners were Sam Torrance, followed by Robert Allenby. But who will join the role of honour in this Euro Pro Tour event today? Well, Alex Belt certainly looks favourite. He's two clear, two to play. But the likes of Dermot McElroy and James Fraser still very much in the equation, maybe even with a big finish, Steve Surrey. Yeah, there's still all to play for. Hey, Fraser. Need some good, solid shots on these last few holes. Get the ball into good places. Give yourself some putts. And that's what he's done there. Come on. Come on. Oh, we've seen a few there. They've not quite rolled out as we would have hoped. Or well, they would have hoped. But that is three feet for birdie. Yeah, that was a cracker as we return to Mr. Belt on the 17th. Middle of the fairway. Good looking swing. Another very good shot, pin high. He's a former winner of the Northern PGA Order of Merit, is Alex Belt. That qualified him for the BMW PGA Championship at Wentworth in 2015, full of experience. Yeah, great experience that. As we see, McElroy, all sorts of problems in these closing holes. Slipping away from him. Now, Fraser, after that cracking tee shot, slightly down the hill, but you just need to pick your line and be positive with these ones. Don't let him get away, which he does. You have to wish him every success. He's a really hard worker, is James Fraser. In the off-season, he took temporary work with his friend's commercial cleaning company, and he also helped on the refurbishment of certain retail outlets. Before this round, he chatted with Kit. You've been in contention a lot, but never quite in the lead mm -hmm. heading into the final round. How different does it feel compared to being um, the, uh, <clears throat> the chaser, as it were? Yeah, a lot different. Um, I've been in the final group before, uh, but never, you know, as you said, never leading. It is, it, it definitely does feel different because you're now the one mm -hmm. being hunted, <laughs> so to speak. Um, but, you know, yeah, I just got to go out and do the same thing that I've done the last two days. And, mm -hmm. you know, really, uh, you know, how, how I played the last two days has sort of been pretty similar to what I've done the whole year. So, you know, nothing different and mm -hmm. just stick to the game plan and, and hopefully it'll be my week. And after so many close calls, what would it mean to you if you did get the win today? You know, I, I've got to. I, I need that win. You know, I've got to get that win for myself, really, because, you know, like you said, I've had a few close calls, and and the more the time goes on, you start to think, you know, will I get the win? You know, you see other guys getting, you know, a couple of wins. You've got 16-year-olds just won the last two events, and you think, you know, he's 14 years younger than me, and he's just won twice. Um, so, you know, it'll be great, and and I think, you know, especially going in, you know, the, the final event in a couple of weeks on the in the tour final. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll be, um, you know, great confidence booster for, for those two. But standing in Fraser's way is Scott, this man. 
Yeah, Alex Bell has played very, very well today. He's put the foot down when he needed to. Can he make another one? That should be safe tap in for his part. And he's just got to navigate that potentially disastrous 18th. But he's in a position where he doesn't need to take too many risks. Keep it in play. These boys have got to chase him down. And let's see what Fraser can do with this little pitch from the side of the green. That's a great shot over those humps there. Very well judged. Get himself out of jail. All kinds of issues, though, for McElroy on the 18th. And you have to think, golf is a game of reaction. And as Fraser taps in on 16, I think McElroy's problems on the last have been, in many respects, caused by the disappointment of missing that short birdie put on 17. Yeah, sometimes it's just momentum, you know. You miss a putt, the momentum goes, and then it falls apart after you've played some really good golf. And a double bogey seven. A real blow, especially considering where he is in the road to Amandura in that promotion push. Yeah, it's uh, just really taking the wind out of his sails, this one. Yeah, disappointing. Double bogey seven to finish. Three shots in the last three holes. So, so costly. But, you know, he's a great player. Just needs to put those frustrating moments aside. Keep focused on the job. Now Fraser, second at 17. He needs to give himself a chance here. Which he has done. Now we know big numbers are possible at 18, so if Steve Surrey can make a birdie at the last, he'll at least equal the clubhouse target set by Ennefer. Another one just maybe half a club short and it's dug in, stuck right on the front of the green. Yeah, I mean, this should be bread and butter shot for Steve. One of his wedges. Just got to get the yardage. Now, Belt. This is his third shot. Can he get it back to the pin without bringing in the danger behind the green? Oh, he can indeed. That is a class shot. That is real quality, I have to say that. Just hands and arms, pushed it in there, great shot. Superb spin control from Belt there to drop it and stop it right next to the pin here on 18. He's got about three and a half feet for birdie. It's just going to want to bleed a tiny bit to the right, but it's always inside the hole. Keep it central, nice and firm, and you post 15 under par in the clubhouse. Well, considering Belt's circumstances, this is now a must-make on 17 for Fraser. Yeah, got to give this one a chance. And he has. Brilliant putt. Keeps the dream alive. With one hole to play. Fantastic effort. Yeah, that was good. I was impressed with that. Steve Surrey on the 18th. Long range for his... Four. A bit more than he'd want to leave himself for his palm. So here we are, this extremely difficult par five. More often than not for professional golfers, they look at par fives as an almost certain birdie, but this is one you've got to tr treat with great care. The water, as John told us earlier, all the way up the left, got to find the fairway, and then do you take on the green for your second shot or choose to lay up. I think if you've got a shot in hand, you lay up in front, pitch it in close, a five's a good score. And the most telling statistic on that graphic, 30 double bogeys here so far this week and 12, seven or worse. So we know what James Fraser's doing, playing safe, or at least trying to. Oh, iron off the tee, the cardinal sin. Yeah. That is, well, unmentionable for him. As we go back to the green, and we see Surrey. Come on, Steve, roll this one in. Five feet for par. Yeah, well done. Good two-putt in the end. 
a solid day for him, three under par 69, just the one bogey, but he had his chances out there. And now coming up what could be the decisive blow. Yes, this is uh, what all the work's for. Firm. And yes, he knows that that's a very important putt. Alex has played a belter. And with a round of 65, he's not only probably won the tournament, but shot the joint lowest score of the week. Yeah, four under for the last five holes there. Eagle and two birdies. Tremendous round as we look back at Fraser. Well, as we can see, it stayed just out of the water hazard. But takes all his options out, get it into a reasonable place for a third shot to the green. Well, he didn't look like he hit a lot of club there. Hopefully he hasn't left himself too much to do. Now here's Rice. Eagle attempt on 18. This would be a way to finish. Good pace. Just not on the right line. Should be a safe tap in for. Oh dear me. Well, what that means is that Fraser now has to hold that shot to force a playoff. Yeah, it's all not gone to plan there with the safety from the tee as we see Rice. Finishing off for his birdie. Again, three under par 69. Three bogeys in there today, which just stalled his progress. But a solid week. Well, better safe than sorry. Alex Belt on the driving range, but I don't think the clubs will be required in a very short amount of time. If this goes in, it's a, a lightning bolt. Yes, it's all that's left for him, but uh, this is asking a great deal. Not attacking with that shot either. History has repeated itself in Northamptonshire. Come on, give me the cool ball. Come on, come on, give me the cool ball. Yeah, the moment of victory. Well done, he won here in 2013 on the Euro Pro Tour. 2017, ditto. Yeah, fully deserved. Tremendous finish to his round today. Now Fraser chip and run here for his part now and you can see the disappointment it's just all a bit after the Lord's Mayor's show well this for a bogey six he needs to make this one every putt is valuable and that slides by and that is yet another double bogey we see on this Treacherous 18th hole. And a very expensive seven as well for Fraser. You have to feel very sorry for him because he put up a real fight. In the end, Fraser fell back into a share of second spot with Enifer, for whom finishing runner-up was a Euro Pro Tour personal best. It was also a good outing for Tim Rice and Steve Surrey, but the winner of the Jesse May Championship by three shots, Alex Pelt. And to the winner, the spoils. Obviously, very excited and um, very thankful that I managed to get over the line, which is, you know, there's some good competition out there and I could feel them breathing down, even though the score didn't really sort of reflect that afterwards. Um, I could sense that um, when I got to 15, well, I knew that when I was coming up the last 14 under, someone else was on 14 as well, so making a birdie up the last was definite, um, definite game changer, really. And of course, you won the last time we were here four years yeah, ago, so you've defended, champ. defending yeah. champ, come back successfully. You must be hoping it's not another four years until you're back here. No, I'm hoping there's going to be a European tour event here, so I can, <laughs> you know, <laughs> get the 200,000. No, I'm only joking. But no, I love the place. Um, I've got good vibes, as I said earlier in the interview. Um, I, just, I just enjoy playing the course. Belt, the 11th different winner on the Euro Pro Tour this season, climbs to 15th on the money list. 
But up top, it's the two multiple champions of the year, 16-year-old Min Q Kim and the race to Amandwera leader, Chris Lloyd. That with just two events remaining. Kit, another astonishing day here today. The leaderboard kept chopping and changing. Didn't really know where to look. Absolutely, plenty of drama out there and that was always likely to happen. It was a tight leaderboard heading into the final round and with water on 10 holes, there's plenty of opportunity for everything between double bogey and eagle. Any one of 10 guys could have won it. Well, it was Alex Belt who took the win today. What did you think of his performance? Hugely impressive. He looked very good all day, but especially on that closing stretch. Four under par for the final five holes under the gun is what champions have to do. And of course, four years ago, he was the last man to win when we came here. So he had to wait a while, but a bit of deja vu for him. Well, the drama continues with our players as we head into the final regular event of the season. Before we head to Amandwira, we'll see you next time at Morallerton.